What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're gonna be talking about Puppy's Ogre Magi. The reason why I wanna do this is because Puppy shows a lot of concepts that I think support players simply don't understand. I'm gonna make sure you guys understand how to dominate the laning stage once and for all, because anytime I have to coach a support player, or I watch a support player in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5k MMR bracket, I just don't understand why they're being so passive, and why they don't understand how to trade. So yeah, if you wanna learn how to trade, this is going to be the video for you. On top of that, you're gonna see I have Dota buff pulled up here, and I'm in the meta tab, and what I wanna show to you is that Ogre Magi is one of the highest win rate heroes all the way from 0 MMR towards 4k MMR, right? This hero's win rate is very, very good, and that makes sense. Ogre Magi is easy to use, he naturally scales, and he's tanky, so if you're out of position, you don't get punched as hard. It's just very friendly to most players. And so yeah, this video is going to teach you about one of the best supports in Dota, as long as you're not in the Immortal or Divine bracket. So if you're excited for that, please click the like button right now, and on top of that, Oh, what do we have here? A tab to GameLeap.com. What is this? How to play versus a smurf? <laughs> nah, but I mean, if you guys want to check out our content, you can see right here, I'm looking at our, our, our homepage for Dota videos, and I recently just did a VOD analysis where I looked at one of my students' game, and I teach you everything you need to know as Phantom Lancer on how to play when you're versus smurf. Also, he did well in this game, and I talk about how to snowball. So there's really a lot of great concepts within these videos. I think they're uh, just high quality with good information. So if you're interested in this exclusive content you'll never see here on YouTube, click the link down below, get your 25% discount, and it's just GameLeap.com, and I'll see you guys there. Alright, so we're gonna start off the lane by looking at his first couple waves. This is very important. Most players kinda just don't do much in the first couple waves, and it's really a detriment to their team. Some lanes you can't, but Ogre Magi is one of the strongest level 1 traders in Dota, and therefore you should run at people at level 1. Let's talk about how you do that, because there is a specific way in which you must if you want to get maximum value. So he's gonna approach the lane here, obviously it's a very strong try lane they're running, However, if your dual lane is even relatively strong, you can do the same thing I'm going to show you here. You should just look to create 1v1 situations as much as possible. So he's going to walk up to the Underlord, but he's never going to overextend. And this is the first thing I want to point out. If the offlaner is not letting them hit you and they continuously run away, all you should do is deny creeps. A lot of players, they'll just kind of keep chasing, they'll pull creep aggro, they'll do nothing. What you want to do is help your carry deny the creeps, right? A lot of people might be like, oh, speed, this is obvious, but you don't do it. You don't do it, so keep this in mind. On top of that, let's quickly talk about his item build. He has an orb of venom, one tango, a salve, a clarity, and a branch. This is a very well-rounded item build to trade. On top of that, he has skilled fire blast, not ignite. And I'm actually a fan of this build. Fire blast is four seconds less on cooldown, 15 less mana, and it's a stun, meaning you can get more red clicks off. And so yeah, let's see how he approaches this fight. He's going to come through the trees, he's going to go for the deny, right? Obviously, always go for denies in Dota. And then, once the, the Mirana shifts over, and once he feels like he's in slight advantage, right? Also, the Shadow Demon sort of walks away, you're going to see exactly what he does and when he stuns, because it's not random. So the first stun he goes for is when Underlord is overcommitting for this creep. And just to be clear, guys, if you're trying to win your laning stage, what you need to do is look at when the people are, are against you, when they're paying attention to creeps, right? And I know I say this a lot, but really as a support, especially when you have stuns, this is number one. If you have stuns, this is how you know when to stun people. So you're going to see Ogre Magi wants to creep. He's going to lead him with the stun, auto attack, and he's actually going to man up, right? Um, he could have potentially gone behind him there, just a hardcore man up, but I think he just didn't want to overextend. Remember, the key to trading is to always just get a couple of auto attacks in, get a favorable trade with your spell, and then back off. A lot of players overcommit. You're better off just waiting for your next stun cooldown and rinse repeating. And that's what we see here. Look at Puppy's movement, right? He's running in front of the Underlord before he's even stunned or hit the Underlord. Why is this? Because now that mid one stepped up, he has an opportunity to get a stun, auto attack with his Orb of Venom, and of course, with some really good attack moving, he's able to get first blood. And this is how you win trades and lanes in Dota. It's not about instantly bursting people from 700 health to zero, it's about slowly chipping them down by going on them three to four times. And now we're once again gonna see this, and honestly, if you're playing Ogre Magi or some sort of lane dominator such as Bane, Chan, Enchantress, just get in there. Tank the damage for your team. You should intentionally try to die. I'm gonna do an experiment with you guys that, that I really wanna show off showing you how little 
right? How little kills mean? Why is this a crucial kill for the Underlord? Why should Puppy be willing to sacrifice his life to kill this Underlord? The reason is, is because Underlord does not have TP. So anytime you do have TP and they don't have TP, you should all in as a support if you have the resources. And that's exactly what they do here, right? Puppy doesn't want to die to the Shadow Poison, so he resets a little bit, right? No need for him to overextend, but eventually he pops his salve, comes all the way back around, pops his Bloodlust, shifts over, bullies out the Shadow Demon a bit, gets a stun onto the Underlord, and secures the kill. And that's what we like to call impact, guys. That is an actually impactful kill, because now he's used all of his resources, he's bought efficient regen that he's now used, and on top of that, he's able to give his Luna complete free farm, free levels in a tri lane, right? This is how you win lanes 101. You have to copy everything I just told you to do and rinse repeat. You can even see that Puppy's first set of items was not boots. It wasn't arcane boots. Believe it or not, guys, you don't have to rush arcane boots. You can buy more regen just to win the lane. And now here, I just want to quickly show you how little XP really kills give. I don't think people actually understand or have ever looked at it. Creeps give just as much XP as a kill. It's about the same. And no, I'm not kidding. Maybe it's more like two creeps equals a kill, but it's about that. And that's what people don't understand. They're always over committing for kills when the goal of the laning stage is supposed to be to zone people off the creep wave so that you can get a lot of CS, so you can get a lot of denies, so you can give your carry a level advantage. And that's what we see here. The Luna is level four. The Underlord is two, almost three, but still two. On top of that, he has no last hits, which is honestly the biggest part. Can't stress this enough. Look at the network, 1300. We have a 1700 Luna, purely based off really good last hits because the Luna has no kills. And now at this point, I want to show a really good trading by Puppy overall. Let's talk about every single little sequence that comes into play here. So he's going to start trading with the Underlord, right? He's just hitting him, and he understands that, once again, as long as Luna is getting free farm, he's willing to trade all of his HP to zone out for the Luna. So he baits the Underlord by going on him early. He also calls over for his carry to shift, and this is a sign of a very smart player. You have to do this in your pubs as well. When you find an opportunity to go on someone, you can't expect your teammate to shift over. You have to tell them, hey, come here. Otherwise, they're not going to come. The next example I have here is actually a very important one, and I'm extremely happy to show it to you because I think a lot of players would make the exact opposite decision of what Puppy does here. So Puppy sees that they're going on mid. This is his player perspective. He sees that Thompson is rolling on mid, Thompson is level 6, and therefore Thompson will likely be trying to kill the Kunkka. If you hit level 6 and you get magnetized, you can basically solo kill anyone who can't purge it. And so, what we're going to see from Puppy is that he doesn't TP. A lot of players would look at this and they would get super mad. They would flame their support, they would flip out, and yet Puppy stays top. Why is that? It's because he understands, number one, his win condition, and number two, him TPing here wouldn't even guarantee a save on the Kunkka. It wouldn't guarantee it, right? There's a high chance he would stun, and the Kunkka would either TP out anyway, like he did, right? Kunkka managed to TP out, or the Kunkka just would die anyway. And so all I'm saying is if you are winning a lane, right? If you're stomping your lane, and you can continue to stomp it, that is the most reliable play you can make. I'm going to say that one more time, just so everyone is clear. If you are stomping a lane, and you can continue to stomp it, right? For another three to four minutes, do your best to stay in that lane unless you really have to leave. Because if you can stomp a lane and keep stomping a lane, that is often the highest net worth possible play you can make, right? The biggest exchange of net worth. However, in this clip, we're really going to show a priority of puppies, you know, I guess priorities. We're going to show an example of, of his overall priorities. Matumba Man's getting dove, and this time, he instantly TPs. He understands that, hey, it's under tower number one, which makes this a 10 times better TP. Obviously, fighting under tower uh, makes TPs significantly better. And most importantly, he wants to save Matumba Man. As we talked about, that is their win condition. And because of that TP, they're able to get a kill on the Topson, another one on a no-tail, and finally finish it off with a kill on a mid one. And that's really how you decide whether or not to TP. You have to determine, you know, where the fight is actually happening. Is it under tower or in the open? Am I winning my lane? If I am, maybe I won't TP. And yeah, I think those are really good rules of thumb just for you guys to use overall. I think it's super important to understand when to TP because usually when I watch 2 to 3k players TP, they actually end up griefing their lanes. And no, I'm not trying to flame you. That's just my observation. And now to finish up this supporting video, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. But we're going to look at two more clips, one at the 18 minute mark and one a little bit later on. 
This clip I'm really fascinated by, and I think it's such a good example of, you know, just being a self-sacrificial support player when you have, you know, a team comp who can carry you. Do you have to play like this in pubs? I would say not necessarily, it depends on how aggressive the enemy team is going, but if you feel like you need to protect your cores, maybe you have a TB or an elf jungling, this is exactly what you want to do. Number one, this is a really cool ward trick that I, I, I guess I haven't seen, I don't know how, uh, but I just really haven't seen other players do that. So yeah, you can apparently go from this tree and put it in this camp, and it does block the camp, so you do have to be careful. Like, your teammates might flame you. They're going to be like, Oh my god! Why did it block my camp? <laughs> uh, they will do that. They they definitely will do that. So you, you do have to be careful, obviously. Uh, make sure your team uh, does actually need vision there. But the reason why Puppy does this is he assumes that at this point in the game, around the 19 minute mark, that OG is going to go bottom. OG is going to try to control bottom. And that Secret is going to try to eventually control top. So Puppy is prepping for this, right? Or he's actually prepping for an eventual smoke gank in here. So what he's doing is he actually is just suiciding in this area. He knows they're here, right? He's, he did see the, the Shadow Demon top. He does see the Grimstroke bottom and he did see the Underlord top. He does not see this Lifestealer. That is a bug. He also did not see the Earth Spirit. But because of this invasion, he's able to get in here, uh, tries to stun him and focuses the D ward instead of saving his own life, uh, which is honestly funny. He does end up going down, unfortunately. But is this worth it? Absolutely. Not only does it keep his Luna alive from a potential gank, which is crucial, right? His Luna doesn't end up dying because of this. It allows his team to put some pressure on the top side of the map, get a little bit of extra farm. And overall, this is kind of what you're trying to do on Ogre. Send out your body, say take my body, and uh, eat of it. The next thing I would like to mention is his overall skill build and his next up item build. In my opinion, I wish more players would go down this route. Number one, he maxes out the fire blast. This lets you burst people. If you get lucky on your multicast, you have the opportunity just to burst people down, kind of shred them. Number two, uh, you want to max out bloodlust if you have right click carries. If for whatever reason, none of your teammates like attack speed and you think they don't really need the movement speed for whatever reason, mostly the attack speed, you can max out ignite. But for the most part, as a position five ogre, you should be maxing out your Q, maxing out your E. They're your most valuable spells. Ignite is good, but if you're taking Bloodlust and, and Fire Blast, you should be taking the cast range at level 10. On top of that, let's look at his items. Sentry's OBS, pretty standard. Magic Wand, you better have this item. Bracer, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Makes you very tanky. And remember, guys, the goal of Ogre Match High in mid-game fights is basically to kill himself for vision. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You actually want people to initiate on you so that they commit spells and so that your team can counter initiate. That's actually the genuine intention of Ogre Magi in most mid to late game fights. And finally, he's got a Glimmer Cape. Why is this good? Well, the enemy team has a lot of magical damage and he just wants to kite them. I really think it makes a lot of sense. Mostly magical, Lifestealer isn't, but the rest of the heroes are. So overall, I like this build. On top of that, I'd really like to talk about his positioning here. I think people don't understand, once again, why it's okay to die as a support. I can't stress this enough. I'm gonna look at this example one more later on and we'll end up the video, but I think this is such a cool uh, example. Puppy understands that all he has to do right now as Ogre Magi is buff up the towers and stall for his Luna. His win condition is Luna. In fact, he clearly believes that Luna will outcarry uh, the Lifestealer, right? He, he has a lot of faith in his Luna. And I, I don't blame him. They're kind of playing a 4 Protect 1. The Clockwork and the Kunkka will frontline, as well as the Ogre Magi. And then this right click Marana, yes, uh, Yapsur is going right click Marana with the Javelin BKB build, and a right click Luna are going to sit in the back and do damage. And that's their strategy. So, all Puppy has to do is Bloodlust the Tower, push out the Creep Wave, and sure, he did overextend here a little bit. I'm sure he would agree on that. But nonetheless, all he is doing is giving Vision of the enemy team when they go on him, right? Did he have to extend that far? No, he went a little bit too far. I think everyone would argue that. However, he's still giving vision of the enemy team so that the Luna can free farm, the Kunkka can push out mid, and he's stalling the push by buffing up the tower. You can see the Bloodlust tower kills the creep wave very fast. Unfortunately, they don't have Glyph, but you can see the overall impact of this play. It really opens up the map for your team, and that is why you want to die as a support even in solo queue, because worst case scenario, they don't try to come kill you. And then you get free farm. How great's that? But yeah, no joke. You actually can make people come kill you and it's good. And next up, let's look at some late game team fighting. At level 15, by the way, guys, he took 275 health. Once again, you just want to stay alive and be able to take spells. On top of that, he has a telescope, one of the best items, obviously, in Dota as a neutral item for supports. And he buys a four staff. I really think that the telescope really does enable the four staff. Having the extra cast range makes this item far better. And you're actually going to see that come into play here, which is really cool. Uh, without the extra cast range, his clockwork maybe dies here. So we're going to see that clockwork gets gone on. 
He pops a really nice Cogs, unfortunately the Life Stealer is going to break through, but with a great Force Staff, he's able to kite out the fight. And that's why supports need to buy Glimmer Force Staff. I don't know why people don't do this. Stop buying useless items. Buy the items that kite out the fight, right? If you have a Giga Core, or the enemy team is very bursty like Life Stealer, right? Life Stealer has to kill people within rage. If you can Force Staff and Glimmer Cape them, you are winning the fight. And so yeah, we're going to see a fake back by Secret. I really like this play. They decide to pop a smoke. Unfortunately, they were getting scanned earlier, but nonetheless, they do pop the smoke. Uh, and you're going to see the positioning of Puppy here. He has no problem being on the front line. Generally, this is terrible positioning as a support. There's no way you want to stand next to your clockwork. Like, are you serious? There's no way you do this. But as Ogre Magi, that's totally acceptable, right? He can just run on the front line, leads in, gets a stun onto their spirit, lights them up with an ignite, walks in, and he's actually even auto attacking a little bit because he really doesn't care. On top of that, he's obviously constantly igniting people. If you're trying to be a good Ogre Magi, your goal in the fight is to hit tank damage and use your spells off cooldown. If you're not using your spells off cooldown, it's essentially a mistake, unless it makes you overextend, right? D don't, don't go a mile away from your team. That's not the goal. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll watch this endgame fight as Sumil gets absolutely destroyed on the Life Stealer. This game ends in about a minute. And as you can see, the Matama Man Luna has finally come online, and I think that's very much in part to the fact that Puppy sacrificed his game for Matama Man to come online. And a lot of supports don't do this. They say, oh, I'm so afraid of dying. And then, naturally, because you're afraid of dying, you actually create negative space for your cores. In fact, you almost bring the enemy team to your cores because you're constantly standing next to them and they want to kill you. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense, guys. Play more aggressive in the lane, in the mid game. Just be more aggressive, especially if you're Ogre Magi. This applies to basically every support, but I really, really emphasize it if you do try out Ogre Magi, like I'm suggesting in today's video. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys really did enjoy. I love watching Puppy play. Um, he, he's just such a good support player that knows how to balance farming, fighting, good laning, good decisions, good smokes. It's it's beautiful gameplay. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me. But I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there. And generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end. Because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.